Welcome to SARPI Outlook, a program dedicated to promoting democratic ideals from an issue-based perspective. This year, however, we are focusing on candidates who embody those ideals and who are running for public office. I'm Peg O'Day Lippert. Our guest is Dave Domina, candidate for the U.S. Senate. Welcome, Dave. Well, thank you for having me. I'm, it's a pleasure to be here. I read recently that the third district Republicans can't sort out, figure out, distinguish among, or even decide who to support for this Senate race, as they have so many candidates. We don't have that problem. Uh, we uh, fortunately have you, and I venture they won't have that problem either when they have an opportunity to meet you and to listen to you. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> With that backdrop, a good place to begin is what is it you would like to say to those third district voters to convince them to support you and to vote for you in November, Dave? Well, I think the first thing that third district people should know is that I'm a product of the third district. When I was a kid, Cedar County, my home, was in the first district, but now it's in the third. <laughs> my family still lives there. My farmland that my wife and I have is in the third district. We've been in business outside my professional life in the 3rd District, uh, both in Howard County and in Wayne County for 31 years. So we've got tight connections to the 3rd District. I've also represented thousands, I'm sure is a fair number, of people across the 3rd District in very complicated cases. Generally, when the issue was so complex that a lawyer from the 3rd District asked me to help. Let's expand that to all of our viewers today. Dave, what, how can you convince them to support you? Well, I think it's important to understand three or four things about the mood of the United States, the needs of the United States, and what I think is the purpose for having a United States. We're a democracy. That means nobody gets all of what we want. It's a system that is designed and based on not strict partisanship without compromise, but thoughtful reflection and a compromise to get to the middle. I'm not running as a partisan candidate. In fact, I was a registered independent for a long time. I returned to the Democratic Party when persuaded to consider this race. I think the key things Nebraskans are looking for in a United States Senator are, frankly, objectivity, intelligence, the ability to articulate clearly on the issues after focusing on understanding the real facts and an array of real solutions, and then speaking at the right time so that Nebraska's voice is heard when it makes a difference. Thank you for, for addressing those, those issues, and obviously we could talk for hours about what's important to you and to the voters in Nebraska. However, I think it is important for the voters to get to know you, the person, so what is it, Dave, that you would like to tell our voters about uh, you, Dave Domina, the Nebraskan, the lawyer, the husband, the father, and now the politician? Well, it's hard to talk about yourself. Uh, I see other politicians do it, and it is a hard thing to do. Uh, I'm a Nebraskan, born here, raised here, educated here, returned here to engage uh, in my business and professional life continue to have family members here. Uh, my children are products of Nebraska's public schools, as I am. Uh, I'm, of course, married to Carol, who's actually a North Dakota native, mm -hmm. but we met in Wayne uh, County and in Wayne. Uh, and uh, so uh, our marriage is also a product of the 3rd <laughs> District. Um, I, uh, I am a lawyer. Uh, I have been blessed to have really a remarkable series of experiences as a lawyer. We've had three impeachment cases in, the Nebra in Nebraska's history. I missed the one in 1870, but I handled the other two. Uh, when Nebraska had its own state-level version of the 2008 banking crisis, uh, I was pretty young, but I was privileged to handle that as a special acting attorney general, and we took a different approach than the federal government. We put the bankers in prison, we removed the bad politicians, and we didn't bail anybody out. And as a result, we uh, made things work. I've had a number of cases that have declared laws unconstitutional. The most recent, of course, the uh, law that permitted the pipeline to be placed, uh, or at least uh, tentatively placed across our state by a foreign 
country, taking our farmer's land, while leaving the pipeline in place at the end of its duration. So, a blessed time practicing law. Would you want to elaborate a little on the uh, pipeline issue? I think that is of particular interest to the rural Nebraskans who, who live on the aquifer. Uh, so would you want to elaborate sure. on that a bit? I will. People in favor of the pipeline generally think two things. First, it will create jobs. That's true. I'll comment on that a, bo a bit more in a minute. And second, they think that we need the oil and that it will contribute to the North American oil supply. People in Nebraska against the pipeline, who I represent and I share their view, are against it for very specific Nebraska localized reasons. The company, TransCanada, is a foreign corporation. It was tentatively given the power of eminent domain to take Nebraska farm and ranch land in order to build a pipeline to operate for a profit after adversely affecting the land on which Nebraskans make a living. TransCanada was required to make one payment, even though they will use that pipeline for an estimated 50 to 60 years. They were not required to take the pipeline out at the end of those 50 or 60 years. The removal cost could be tens, maybe even hundreds of times what it costs to put it in. So there were so many things about the unfairness for Nebraska landowners that it was necessary to address the law. On its merits, of course we need pipelines. They are essential infrastructure. Everybody believes that. But they ought to be operated by responsible operators who are committed to being good neighbors and being truthful. This particular company has repeatedly demonstrated in Nebraska that it is not committed to those three things. Well, is it uh, true or false that the uh, oil would not even be used in this country and therefore would not reduce, you know, the import of oil? It is true that the oil is destined for export after it's refined in Texas. Mm -hmm. It would go on the world market and then from that perspective would affect worldwide supply but no direct effect on the North American mm -hmm. market. Well, and as far as the employment, isn't it true that after the pipeline would be built, there would be very few jobs in Nebraska? You know, I've heard uh, it said that there would be 25,000 jobs. That's not true. Mm -hmm. The better estimate is 1,100 construction jobs. Mm -hmm. Those are good and important jobs. Mm -hmm. They're probably one-year jobs, and sure. then they're gone. Mm -hmm. One interesting thing that I think people uh, vet invested in that part of the equation should know, the pipeline, of course, is built of steel. Nebraska has a steel mill, and this pipeline will be built within about 60 miles of that plant, but it will be built with foreign steel, built mm -hmm. in Asia, not American steel, built in the United States. If I were the president, and I'm certainly not, I wouldn't grant a crossing permit unless it's U.S. steel, U.S. jobs, U.S. trucks, U.S. teamsters, and fair treatment to U.S. farmers and ranchers. Well, we'll have to wait and see, I guess, on that one, won't we? We will, but I'm hopeful. I am too. I am too. Uh, what about other energy sources in Nebraska? You know, we are known for our wind. Um, do you have any views on that? I, I do. There is some money in the Farm Bill to develop wind energy, and it should be developed in the plain states, including Nebraska. Uh, we've disincented it in Nebraska. There haven't been adequate federal incentives. We pay lip service to the idea of getting off fossil fuels, but we have really abundant sunlight and even more abundant wind for the beneficial and efficient production of electricity, and we're wasting it. Mm -hmm. That should stop. What other principles, and, and you, I've heard you use that term as in contrast to issues, would you like to uh, address and that you think can be the turning point for you, Dave, in this election? Well, m may I make a distinction between principles please, and issues? Please do. I think the, the distinction between pr principles and issues may itself be the turning point. Hmm. We agree generally as people on principles. We disagree on issues, but principles give rise to issues, and issues are usually about how to do something, when to do it, 
uh, with whom or where to do it. The, the principle, however, that generates the issue and excites the conversation is generally one upon which we agree. Mm -hmm. Energy is a good example. Mm -hmm. Generally, we agree that energy should be clean, efficient, from renewable sources and produced domestically. Now, we can get into all kinds of divisive issues, and they're harder to solve if we don't return to those principles, repeat them, and evaluate each of the issues mm. in light of those principles. Mm. So I hope Nebraskans will thoughtfully distinguish between principles and issues. Can you give us another example of a, a principle with alternative issues, perhaps? I, I can. I think the one that touches me the most is one that comes out of my professional life. Mm -hmm. I was opposed to the war in Iraq. It didn't make sense to me. But I was never opposed to the commitment of American troops. And the son of a client of mine who was accused of a crime and acquitted of that crime was terribly injured in Iraq as he was recovering, a young man who volunteered for the armed services of the United States out of an act of patriotism for his country, he reflected on what the loss of a part of his body meant and concluded that it meant that some other American could have the rights his father had enjoyed and allowed his father to remain free. Now, we can disagree about the war, but how can we disagree about the principle that led that young man to give a part of his body for all of us. Thank, thank you, Dave. Uh, until a few months ago, I only knew about you by your name. And each time I meet you and hear you speak, I am more and more pleased with the consistency of your message and, and the thoroughness and thoughtfulness of your, of your approach. Uh, you are, in my opinion, superior to many, if not most, politicians in that you don't just say the things people want to hear. You say it the way you see it. Well, it's nice certainly <laughs> that integrity, I think, that sets you apart and uh, is why we want and need you to be our next U.S. Senator. Uh, so what, in concluding, what parting message would you like to leave with our viewers? You know, I'd like to have you evaluate what it is that you really want of a U.S. Senator. My impression is that, generally speaking, the Senate is populated by average people on the left and average people on the right. Average senators on the left and average senators on the right. And a few senators make the real difference. I think those senators are distinguished by the intensity of their work, their ability to listen, their thoughtfulness at reflecting on accurate data and insisting they have it, their strength at resisting pressures from lobbyists and trying to live without those pressures as fully as they can, their ability to distill the data and articulate a thoughtful message mm -hmm. and to be timely about delivering that message. If I'm given the responsibility of representing people in Nebraska in the United States Senate, I don't intend to be an average U.S. Senator. I will try at the top end of my ability to accomplish those things I just mentioned. Wow. Thank you so much, D Dave, uh, for taking time from your busy schedule to be here. And on behalf of the Sarpy County Democrats, I want to wish you the best and want you to know that both individually and collectively, we're going to do everything we can to ensure that you represent us in Washington. Well, thank you. And I hope that as a candidate and, and as a U.S. Senator, I can reciprocate that every single day. Thanks.